2.0 for the NBA. Training camp opens tomorrow, December 1st, with preseason running from December 11th through the 19th. Each team will play at least twice, some teams playing as many as four games. The season starts on December 22nd and continues through early March when there will be an all-star break despite no all-star game, Hannah. Yeah, unless they have to play makeup games <laughs> during that time as we welcome in Brian Windhorst. So, I mean, Brian, listen, uh, this has been crazy times for the NFL, for college football, for college basketball, just games getting canceled constantly with these outbreaks across the country. And over the weekend, the NBA put out their COVID-19 protocols. So we're talking about 450 players who are not going to be in a bubble, the one that was so successful in restarting and finishing the season. What do we need to know about these protocols? Well, Hannah, the NBA is saying that they are expecting, and it's common sense, that there's going to be positive tests. And they are openly saying that even though there's going to be positive tests, they have no intention of slowing the league down, postponing, or canceling. And they made the decision back in November that they were going to start in individual markets, that the bubble idea was going to be retired for the time being. Now, there are teams that have announced that they are going to start without fans. In fact, the Charlotte Hornets were the latest team to announce that today. But the NBA is going to try to fight through this, going to try to manage this situation, and they are going forward. And they are going to start Christmas week, and they are going to get as many games as possible. And to try to mitigate what you're talking about, they are not going to announce the second half of their schedule until later into, into 2021 so they can hopefully make up games that they know will probably have to be postponed. Yeah, and players who test positive could be out as long as 12 days. That's several games in there. It's not just a weekly game like the NFL. So you could perhaps foresee some sort of domino effect. It'll be fascinating to see how that goes um, as players begin reporting tomorrow. And we have a couple of unresolved stories, really big storylines regarding the Lakers and the Bucks. Let's start in L.A. with Anthony Davis. Yeah, how about the two biggest storylines of the NBA offseason? That's Anthony Davis and Giannis Antetokounmpo. Anthony Davis has not signed his contract yet. Training camp starts tomorrow, and it's led people in the league to wonder if he is waiting to see what Giannis does with his contract. The reason this is interesting, Hannah, is that the Lakers only have two contracts on their books for next year at just $15 million because LeBron James has an opt-out clause in his contract. And if Anthony Davis builds his new contract with an opt-out clause, they could have anything on the table. They could go chasing after free agents, whether it's Giannis or not. So definitely keep an eye on that. He's running out of time to sign him. As for Giannis, he returned to Milwaukee from Greece over the weekend. And the expectation that the team has is they will meet with him in the next few days to discuss his contract extension. Now, it's $225 million in five years, but he only has until December 21st to make up his mind, and then it goes away until next summer. This is obviously a massive thing, arguably the most important thing in the NBA right now, and Giannis is going to have to address it at some point. It's hanging over the Bucks, but the Bucks are confident he's going to sign it. Yeah, and speaking of a domino effect, like you said, it could, you know, maybe inform what AD does. And it's hard to believe. I mean, all these things coming so fast and furious. The season actually begins three weeks from tomorrow. That's that's unbelievable. Uh, Brian, as always, we appreciate the info. Thank you. NBA Donovan Mitchell and the Jazz agreed to a five-year max extension worth to up $195 million. Wrap your brain around that one. Uh, he's coming off a postseason where he averaged over 36 per. Uh, Jason Tatum, also five-year max with Boston, also worth up to $195 million. Uh, First-time All-Star in 2020 and the Lakers agreed to a deal with Marcus Saul, the defending champs really reworking that front court. They also traded JaVale McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for the Gasol a signing a nice and busy times right here in the middle of football season for NBA insider Brian Windhorst. So uh, can we start with Giannis, our two-time reigning NBA MVP, because he enters the final season of his contract, as we all know, but he could sign the Supermax five years, $228 million, to remain with the Bucks. What sort of ripple effect could that have, Wendy, on the rest of the league going forward? Well, well, Hannah, it's really everything. Um, to be honest with you, we just had the craziest week of NBA transactions in league history, but none, nothing is more important than waiting on this Giannis extension. If he extends, the Bucks are the gigantic winners of this offseason. If he does not extend, we're going to see a mad rush and dash to prepare for his possible free agency next summer. And if you look at moves that teams have made across the league, 
whether it's the Miami Heat signing four players to one-year contracts, whether it's the Toronto Raptors tailoring the contracts of their players so that they have more room next year, or the Dallas Mavericks making trades to clear off guaranteed money, those teams believe there's a chance that Giannis may not sign it. And so the whole league, in one way or another, is sitting on the edge of their seats waiting for that decision. Okay, so let's really play this thing forward now. Let's talk about Anthony Davis because the whole world expects him to return to the Lakers. So how potentially could what Giannis is doing or ends up doing impact the type of contract that AD ends up getting? Yeah, it's unusual for AD to delay his re-signing for, for this long. And one of the things he could be watching is what Giannis does. If Giannis elects to sign the, the extension, then we could see AD potentially sign for longer. But if Giannis sets himself up to be a free agent next year, I know it seems hard for them to believe that the Lakers could do it, but that might spur Anthony Davis to only sign a one-year contract with a player option, which is the kind of deal that LeBron James is on, to leave flexibility in Lakers' payroll. So there's a lot of people watching Giannis Antetokounmpo right now. Um, I know that as you were busy getting all this information, you probably had one eye on the football screen, as we all did yesterday, and stood <laughs> up when we heard Derek Carr's audible in the Chiefs <laughs> Raiders game last night. Let's take a listen. Western Conference Finals appearance, and the Lakers, fresh off the title, agreed to deal with Mark Gasol. They drafted him originally. Defending champs are reworking their front court, trading Javel McGee to the Cavs to clear up some space for Gasol. All right, it's not official until Woj says so. Actually, sometimes Woj says so, then it becomes official. But in any case, uh, we're going with these stories we just told you about. Mitchell and Tatum, the extensions, why do these deals make sense for the players and their teams? Two foundational cornerstone players for both franchises. The, the kind of players that you build around, you know, that guys want to play with, that represent you know, your organization. Those are no-brainers, both five years, with the opportunity to make nearly 200 million dollars for both Donovan Mitchell and uh, Jason Tatum. All right, Lakers win the title and say, let's get a new guy in the five spot. Why was that move made? Well, great opportunity there. Once Dwight Howard left for Philadelphia, they bring in not only Montrez Harrell, but now Marcus Gasol, a much more skilled you know, future Hall of Fame player you know, who can do so many things on the court offensively, defensively, rebound. And, you know, I think for Marcus Gasol, a chance. Remember, this is the organization that drafted him. He was traded for his brother, Pau, before he ever played an NBA game. Now Pau's out living in Southern California. He'll be near his brother and have a chance now to win another NBA title. He won one with the Raptors. Woj using just one of his many phones. Thanks for joining us. He's got another NBA championship. The Lakers have already pretty much renovated that entire roster. They picked up the top two bench scores in the NBA and Dennis Schroeder and Montrez Harrell also improved their three-point shooting by adding Wesley Matthews to a team that ranked 21st in three-point percentage last season and re-signing KCP to a new three-year deal. Yeah, that should help in that area also. All right, to dig a little deeper into NBA free agency, we've got our front office insider Bobby Marks with us. And give Rob Palinka and that front office in L.A. a lot of credit for what they've done for the team that's about to be defending a championship. But considering what they've done, what else can they do? Yeah, rarely do we see a team flip their roster over, right? right? Of course, they still have LeBron James and Anthony Davis, but Wes Matthews, Montrez Harrell, and Contavious Cole Pope, of course, is back. Dennis Schroeder, they've added. Now, this is what they have left to do. They've got four roster spots. Mm -hmm. They only have the veteran minimum exception that's worth about $2.6 million. But here's the challenge. They are hard capped, so you need to fit those spots under that number, $6.5 million. But the challenge becomes is, and here's a player that's being linked to them, is a player like Marcus Gasol. To get Marcus Gasol, it's got to be on the veteran minimum exception, right. unless you can try to work out a sign and trade, possibly for someone like JaVale McGee. The hard part is he only makes $4 million, so you've got to make the money work. But so far, this team has really reshaped itself. Best team in the West right now. Yeah, it'd be interesting if Gasol wants to go West and try to win a second NBA championship. All right, so let's talk about some of the uh, another team, Bobby, that maybe is not getting the attention it deserves based on what they've done with their roster. Yeah, that's the Portland Trailblazers. That's a team that was just fighting to get into the playoffs last year, right. sneaks into the eighth uh, seed. I've got them as a the number two team in the Western Conference really? right now. Yes, they okay. get an A plus for the offseason. I know we don't give trophies for the offseason. No, we do not. But they're getting, it, they're getting it from me. And I think when we look at their roster, here is what they've been able to do. They've added Robert Covington from the Rockets. Yep. They've re-signed Rodney Hood. Of course, Damian Lillard, CJ McCollum, and Yosef Nurkic is back. But this is what I really like. Carmelo, back for another year. 
Derek Jones from the Heat, uh, Zach Collins returns, Ennis Cantor, um, Harry Giles. And was, this is what I call them. I call it the $40 million club, <laughs> right? Okay. Cantor and Covington in trades, free agents, Hood, Anthony Jones, and of course, Harry Giles. Yeah. And where I see them, this is a top four team in the Western Conference. You know, they're way up there in the Pacific Northwest. Oftentimes, they kind of get overlooked. But you got to give Neil O'Shea credit for what they've done so far. And Bobby Marks said they're number two in the West right now. We'll see how that plays out throughout the season. Bob, appreciate Warjanowski, a couple of all-star players have earned max contracts. We start in Boston, where Jason Tatum has agreed to a five-year, $163 million extension with the Celtics. It includes a 30% escalator clause that could turn that guaranteed 163 into 195 million should Tatum make one of the three all NBA teams. The 22 year old averaged career highs of 23 points, seven rebounds and three assists last season. Celtics went to the Eastern Conference Finals for a second straight year. Also grabbing a max bag, Donovan Mitchell. The Jazz guard getting that same five year, $163 million extension. Again, that could balloon to 195 if he reaches all NBA status. The 24-year-old averaged 24 points a game last season, and then he dropped two 50-point games during Utah's seven-game series loss to Denver in this year's playoffs. So all total, you have four players from the 2017 draft class who have scored more than 3,000 points in their young NBA careers. And now three of them have agreed to rookie Supermax extensions with those same squads. The number one pick from that year, Markel Fultz, well, he's no longer with the team that drafted him. Well, with us, though, is the aforementioned Adrian Wojnarowski. And, you know, what was I say to most NBA fans, they look at these deals, they felt like no-brainers for both the player and the squads. But let's start with Mitchell and the reason that he wanted to stay in Utah and they were doing everything to keep him. Yeah, th there's a great relationship there with Donovan Mitchell, not just that organization, but that community. And he came to them right or at the draft, right before Gordon Hayward left in free right. agency. That was a wounded city. And immediately he gave them hope. And they realized very quickly they had a superstar and a player to build around. And now he comes back. Uh, you saw what he did in the bubble. And, and a player that really has blossomed, you've seen as a man. And I, you see him, him at the forefront of the social justice movement this summer in the league. And, and, and he's had a strong voice with that in that Salt Lake community. Right. And you'll see a lot of that going forward. And he's just the kind of person that new ownership there, Ryan Smith, their front office, that they want to build around. We often talk about players that are face of the franchise. He's definitely that there in Salt Lake City. All right, but let's go over to Boston. Jason Tatum, I mean, he really emerged as a star this past season. Granted, they got some young talent in that squad, but that seems to be the building piece for this team going, future, going ahead. Absolutely, especially you've seen some stars come and go from Boston. True. Max players, Kyrie Irving, Al Horford, uh, and then Gordon Hayward. But Jason Tatum uh, is the player now five years, close to 200 million like Mitchell. Uh, with a, one more all-star appearance. And you've already seen with Tatum, he is a player. He can be the best player on a championship team. And, you know, for this Celtic organization with such a history of great ones, he's right. one you imagine up in the rafter someday. It's not easy to get your number up there, uh, but but you imagine it up there. And and he's now for them with Jalen Brown and, uh, you know, this you know young core they have. He's the centerpiece. Yeah, give a lot of credit to Danny Ainge, not only just drafting Jason Tatum out of Duke, but realizing that he could be a cornerstone for this organization going forward. Woj, as always, appreciate the time, brother. Thanks, Mike. All right. Well, this is where the Lakers are right now, and it, it is rare for a championship team to kind of flip this whole roster. And first we saw the move with Dennis Schroeder training for Danny Green. He replaces Rajon Rondo. Wesley Matthews was signed for the um, biannual exception, replaces Contavious Caldwell Pope. Oh, we can't get him in there. Montrez Harrell replaces Dwight Howard. No, nope. touchscreen's not working, but they're in there. Trust me, they're in there. And when you look at their resume, as far as what they have with that roster, Six roster spots open. They've got bird rights on Contavious Caldwell Pope. They still have the veteran minimum, minimum exception, and they're $14 million below the luxury tax. They still have some work to do here, but as, as, you, as you can see, this roster has totally flipped 